The topic of today is surround yourself with people that inspire you and positively affect you. Surround yourself with people that inspire you and positively affect you. And I want to use this opportunity to say thank you so much to every one of you who were with us yesterday uh, at my birthday, even though it was just uh, a broadcast. I want to use the opportunity to thank all of you, everyone that greeted me and sent in their birthday wishes. I want to appreciate you and I want to say thank you so much for you. I received so many, uh, you know, bad day greetings, thousands of them. And uh, I took my time to read every one of them. Uh, I did that also this morning. So I want to thank all of you that uh, took time to wish me bad day greetings. It was a very busy day yesterday, the whole day from the early morning till night. We were celebrating and of course we had a good day and some of you will be able to if you are interested all of you will be able to go into the videos and uh, if you go to the video section on facebook you will see uh, a lot of those recordings so we try to bring as much as possible to you <laughs> we tried not to leave you people out of it so even if you didn't have time yesterday to go you can still go see today you can still go see uh, it was a busy day. I think we had about five different uh, reportage for you, five different reports. We came back to you five different times, you know, the filming uh, and reporting on different things that were happening. So uh, thank you again for for being there and for showing your for love. And we have you, we have bond. It's like we have been able to bond these very few uh, weeks that we are together. You know, it's just less than a month that I've been doing this. And yet, it has been so nice. We have all come together very, um, yeah, very tightly as a family. So that's nice. So today's message is, um, yeah, surround yourself with people that uh, inspire you and positively affect you. People who in inspire you and positively affect you or people who inspire you uh, or affect you positively. You know, uh, our world is already full of so much traumas. Our world is already full of traumas and it's full of bad news. The world is full of bad news. The world is full of, uh, you know, so much depression, so much depress depressing uh, uh, news and so much depressing uh, events happening around us. You know, the life around us is just very depressing on its own. If you put on your television, they put, they give you news that will cause you to go into depression. <laughs> if you, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you will receive phone calls that are just talking about problems and things that don't add uh, inspiration to you. So what I'm trying to say is that Life, there are not too many insp inspiring stuff we see all around us every day. Not too many things that inspire us. Uh, most of the things are things that discourage us. Most of the things are the things that take away our inspiration. So, but if you put your life in a way that, well, uh, this is life. And if you just take life the way it comes and say, well, uh, you know, this is uh, how it is. People... Uh, these are the people who surround me, and this is just what I have in my life. Well, you are going to suffer. You are going to be at the mercy of life. So for you not to be at the mercy of life, there are some things you need to do differently. You can decide your own environment. You can decide your own ambience, the, the, the atmosphere that surrounds you. It is in your hand. You have the power to decide what your environment is. And the way, one of the ways to decide your environment and to decide your mood, and to decide your state of mind, is by choosing, by consciously choosing the people that will surround you. Uh, you know, we can all do that. We all have the power to do that. Somebody could say, well, how can I choose people that surround me? I cannot choose my husband anymore because I'm already married, and I cannot choose my wife, I'm already there, or I cannot choose my neighbors, you know, we live around the same way, or I cannot choose my father, my mother, my relatives. 
and these are the people that so, uh, that I surround myself with. Well, but at the end of the day, you still have the right, you still have the freedom and the authority to actually choose who are the people you relate to or you relate with. So the idea is, who are you relating with on, uh, uh, yeah, who are you relating with on, on regular basis? Who are your friends? Somebody says, show me who your friends are and I will show you who you are, you know. Uh, actually, some people believe that uh, if you take two friends that you relate with most of the time, who are the closest people to you, that you will discover that you are only the average of those two friends. So if they are just average people, if they are not so, so, so great, it, you will just be in the middle of them. You just be, you know, half of them. You, know, you are the average of people that you relate with. Let's say you have five friends and, you know, look at their worth, look at their, uh, look at their, their, you know, their achievements, their success, look at their, their energy, their uh, positive outlook in life, look at their focus, assess them and you will see that you are just like in their middle. You are just the average of the people you relate to and you relate with. So the idea is that the world is so full of things that discourage us most of the time. And it will be a mistake for us to think that, well, there is nothing I can do about it. That is just life. And these are the people I found around me. No, you can decide your own atmosphere. You can decide your own surrounding. You decide your own environment. It is in your power. So, uh, uh, where, you know, let me tell you why this is important. Uh, there are two things that affect your destiny. Where you will be in five years time, and in 10 years' time depends on two things. Where you will be in five years' time or 10 years' time depends on two things. Would you like to know those things that uh, your destiny depends on? Where you will be in two years' time, in five years' time, in 10 years' time? You want to know the two things that decide those things, that, that decide where you'll be, where your future will be? The two things that decide your future, where you'll be in five years' time or 10 years' time are one. The books you read. Because the books you read also form your surrounding. The books you read also form your environment. So you might have the wrong people around you, but through books or the video you listen to, like you are now, you are listening to me now. Some of you have been listening to me for a few weeks now. And that has become your environment. So you can, even though I'm in Ukraine and you are in your country, wherever you are, you can actually decide to bring me to your house, to bring me to your life, and to create an atmosphere of Pastor Sunday in your own house. You can be having Pastor Sunday with you all day long. You can have Pastor Sunday to relate with and to hear Pastor Sunday's voice and to relate with him, to reason like Pastor Sunday almost half of the day or the whole day. What you need to do for that is just to get your cassette, I mean, the, your, your computer or your telephone, you know, you are on your YouTube, go to the YouTube, Sunday at Elijah Official, and you'll be hearing so much wisdom on a daily basis. So you can actually decide that your life will be full of wisdom on, on 24 hours. You can be, you can be loading your life with wisdom, with unconventional wisdom on a daily basis. You could go to my uh, Sunday at Elijah blog.com as well, to my blog, and you fill your life with, with, with that positive, positive impact. So what I'm saying is that uh, uh, you don't have to have people around you physically for you to decide your surrounding. You can decide your surrounding by what you read or what you listen to, by, by, by what you choose to listen to. So if you see that the people around you are not encouraging you, if you see that the people around you are not the people contributing to your destiny, they are not contributing to your future, they are not, the, they are not in the in the. They are not, their life is not, is not reflective of the future life that you would like to have for yourself. If you if they don't, uh, if they are not a reflection of your dream, if they don't have what it takes to take you to the next level, and you see that these are just the people around you, you can still change that. That is not the end. You can just go ahead and, you know, bring the people that you desire or, you know, who can help you to create a better future to bring the people that you think have what it takes, they have the wisdom, they have the know-hows, they have the skills, they have the, uh, you know, they have the understanding, they have the, the wisdom 
to take you to the next level, go and find them. Find their books and begin to read their books. Your, the books you read will decide where you'll be in the next five to ten years. And then if you, it's, sometimes it's not books anymore because many people don't read books. But if you just even listen, if you can find audio messages or audio trainings, audio teachings or, you know, preachings like I'm doing now and bring those people and listen to them on a regular basis and then begin to remold your life, reshape your life according to the truth that those people are going to be teaching you, that is still the same thing as surrounding yourself and creating your future by what you are listening to. So you can actually recreate your future. You can redirect your destiny. You can, re you know, you can, you can rebuild your life altogether just by imagining yourself in the right atmosphere, just by making sure you surround yourself with all the necessary truth and, 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 uh, and words and wisdom and in understanding. So two things decide where you'll be in the next five to 10 years. One, the number one thing that decides your future is the books you read. And the number two thing that decides your future is the company you keep. The company you keep. So two things that will decide where you'll be in 10 years time. So let's examine it. Let's look at your life right now. Will you, maybe, maybe you need to uh, take a sheet of paper and you know, sit down, maybe not right now, but after this message, maybe you need to go back to this message again and sit down and just reflect and meditate and think, okay, now, uh, let me answer these questions. Who are the people that I've surrounded myself with? Who are the people around me? Who are the people in my environment? So you make sure that you write the names of the maybe five or 10 top people that you relate with on a daily basis. Let's say a day is 24 hours. Let's say in my 24 hours, the average of my 24 hours, who are the people that I meet? And who are, who, who, who are, who, who are they? So you have to write down, let's say they are your family. Okay, that's one. Number two, maybe they are your colleagues at work. Okay, that's two. number two. Then number three, maybe they are just your friends. Okay, then you write the list of those people. The people you relate to or you relate with are not just people you see physically. There are also people that you meet, uh, you talk to on phone. You might not be meeting them, but you might be spending a lot of time with them on phone. Or you might be spending a lot of time on your computer doing that, you know, relating to, to those kind of people. So, uh, you know, decide for yourself, who are these people that I relate with most of the time? Who are the people that I relate with most of the time? And then when you get the list, also ask yourself, uh, who are they? What are their achievements? What, what are their achievements today? What are their accomplishments? So answer yourself the question, what are their accomplishments on uh, today? So those people that you are relating with, are they people that bring you encouragement? Do they bring you inspiration? Do they inspire you? Do they encourage you? Do they uh, make you to be more focused about life? Do they live by the right value system? Do they inspire you and gear you up to go and attain greater things, greater heights? Do they make you to want to change and become a better person? Do they influence you in a way that you want to become richer, wealthier, more successful? Do they give you direction in life? Do they push you forward to attain your goals and to, uh, to, to, to pursue the dream that God has put in your heart? Or do they slow you down? Or they're just indifferent? What, are they, what do they talk about on a regular basis? Do they just joke and laugh? Do they just make you feel comfortable? Or they push you? Or they make you uncomfortable, but they push you to attain a greater height in life? Are they a source of encouragement or they a source of discouragement? So what do they bring to the table? How do they improve you? How do they add value to you? How do they inspire you? How do they uh, set you on fire? Do they just set you, do they just inspire you in the area of uh, family? Or they also, maybe they also inspire you in the area of professionalism? Or maybe they inspire you in, in the area of life goals, of vision, of focus? What do they bring to the table? Are they the kind of people? What are they, what do they, what are they have accomplished in their lives themselves? What, are they, what have they accomplished? Are they the kind of people that uh, you would like to emulate? 
Do they have such results in their life that you wish to have in your own life? Are they uh, so successful that you are running and you are striving to catch up with them? Are you learning something new from them on a daily basis? So these are the kind of questions that you want to answer, you want to ask yourself about the people that surround you today. So let's say you have five people and you see that out of those five people that you relate with regularly, there is nobody there. So what you do is that you just go and say, okay, even though I don't have these people around me, but they are there in the world. They are all over the world. So I'm going to bring them to my own sphere, I mean, to my own space. I'm going to build, if you want to become a billionaire, for example, I'm going, you have to just say, okay, I'm going to bring billionaires into my own space, into my environment. I'm going to live with Bill Gates in the same house. I'm going to live with Donald Trump in the same house. I'm going to live with Warren Buffett in the same house. How do you do that? You just go and, uh, and, and, and get their videos or their tapes or their audios or their uh, books and surround yourself, fill yourself with the, with the knowledge that they have and then begin to practice it. So even though you are living with people in your, in, your, in your house or at your work, but you are not living their reality. You are creating your own reality. You see, it is not what we are surrounded with that really matters. It is what uh, we focus on that matters. So if what you so you even though you are surrounded with all these other people that are not going anywhere, but you must uh, seclude yourself intentionally. You must separate yourself and you know emerge yourself in the knowledge, in the books, in the wisdom that you are getting with the, from the people that that you desire to become like, or from the people who are really teaching you some things about life and improving you and rightly inspiring you. So it is when you focus what you focus on. If you are going to focus on self-education, adding value to yourself, on country, you know, on imagining yourself in the wisdom and truth of people that inspire you, then that is who you will become eventually. You will just discover that you are, you are, you are changing. You are changing gradually to the truth that you constantly focus on or listen to. So, and that way also, you must also, in the same, the same way, you must also, you know, don't look, you know, you must also create your, an environment that will inspire you. Create your own inspiration. Let your environment be an automatic inspiration to you. So, what are the, who are the people that speak the words of inspiration in your life or around you? Or who are the people? Look for them all over the world. There are a lot of people in the world that can inspire. Go look for people who have the words of wisdom, the word of inspiration, the word that can lift you up, the word that can make you to say, wow, yes, I'm ready to go. I'm encouraged today. So like someone is writing now, Flair from France. Aha, he's saying, aha, aha. Pastor Sunday is daily in my own house. So bless you, Pastor Sunday. My life is fully and positively uh, uh, moving forward. Love you and thank you so much. So the same way, that's what I started with. You could, if these words and this daily broadcast have been an encouragement and a blessing to you, fill your life with it on a daily basis. You know, listen to it as many hours as possible so that these words of wisdom will become your flesh, so that it will become part of your life. So you are always encouraged. You are always inspired. You are always, you know, encouraged to move forward and to do what you need to do. Uh, that is what it means by, you know, creating your own environment, by relating with people that positively affect you and inspire you. Inspiration is a very important thing. One of the reasons why people, that people, uh, you know, have you heard of pornography? Well, one of the main reasons why people fall into pornography is because they are looking for inspiration. They need inspiration. They want something to inspire them. And because they have not built that system of inspiration, you know, they are just, they are, they are, you know, they just, uh, you know, follow the wind and they just, you know, use whatever they see in the closest to them as their inspiration. One of the reasons why people drink and, uh, and smoke is because they are looking for inspiration. And one of the people, one of the reasons why people fight is because they are frustrated. So, you know, instead of you to just, you know, wait until frustration comes into your life, instead of you to wait and just, uh, you know, and, and just, uh, and just, you know, be thinking that inspiration is when God gives it. 
No, it's, you can create your own inspiration. You can even create a whole atmosphere that gives you the kind of inspiration that you need on a daily basis. So you don't need to wait for inspiration to come by itself. I have had people say, no, I don't know, Pastor, I'm not inspired or I'm not, uh, I'm not as zealous as I would like to be or I'm not as uh, on fire again. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel... People are waiting for feelings. People think that feelings should just come by itself. So many people that feel that it is feelings that just decides uh, what, you know, in their inspiration. If you are going to wait for feelings, you not have enough time to wait because, uh, you know, feelings don't always come. And if you are going to depend on feelings, some of the feelings that will come will not, they are not the ones you would like. So, and if you are going to depend on feelings also, your mood is going to be changing from time to time. You are going to be hot today, then cold tomorrow. Uh, you are going to find out that, you know, you know, you are just, you know, you are just, uh, you know, changing all the time and you are not reliable and, you know, and, uh, uh, you are becoming capricious and people around you will become, you know, frustrated because people don't like people who are not stable. People don't like people who change all the time. People who don't have that like moody people. And if you don't want your, yourself to be moody and your life to be totally run down by, you know, what you feel, then you have to make sure that you take your time to intentionally create your own atmosphere. You have to intentionally, you know, create the kind of, you know, you know, voices that come to your life. You have to intentionally create the kind of influence that come to your life. You have to intentionally create the voices that you permit into your own um, uh, environment. Even though you're, you're, you know, you are living and you are relating with your family and it's a good thing to relate with your family, but if your family members are people who discourage you, if, if there are people who put you down, if there are people that uh, don't speak positive things into your life, then you just have to take your time. Take your time and, and you, know, you know, live with them, love them, uh, you know, treat them well, you uh, be a sower to them. You make sure that you sow the positive things in their lives. You make sure that you bring positive influence in their lives, but close your spirit. Close your spirit into the negative things that they are bringing to you. Close your, your mind. Close your ears into all the, you know, the, 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 the discouraging things that come from them. You decide that. And when they, are begin, when they begin to cultivate the negative things around you, or when they bring, begin to bring negativity to you, just go ahead and hide yourself in the area, in the in the in the room, or in the ambience that you have created for yourself. Go and hide yourself in the environment that you yourself have created. For example, you just you know leave the place where they are quarreling or where they are speaking negative things against you or about you, and just go to your own place or put your head headphone on. And uh, you know, and uh, you know, and uh, and put some some of these messages on. Put on the wisdom nuggets from Pastor Sunday, wisdom tips from Pastor Sunday, or put you know anything in your profession that will make you to become a better person. So you know, fill your life with the kind of thing that will inspire you to become greater. Fill your life with the kind of words, with the kind of understanding that will always you know, make you to be a better person, that will always change you, that will lift you, that will encourage you, that will make you a better yourself. So you don't be at the mercy of where you have found yourself. Some people say, oh, but there is nobody like that here. I want to be a millionaire, but there are no millionaires here. I want to be a preacher, but there are no preachers here. But they are everywhere in the internet. You know, I want to become a mega church pastor, but they are, I don't say anyone. But they're everywhere on the net. Go for them. Go look for them and create that atmosphere. You want to become uh, uh, a successful marriage person, a wife or or husband or you know or you know or mother. You know the same thing. You know, go and look for those materials and create an atmosphere whereby those are the things you fill your life with. So, so uh, what I'm saying is that you decide your environment, you decide your, your, your ambience, you decide your surrounding, and you decide your inspiration. Don't depend on goose, on, on you know, uh, on uh, uh, goosebumps to, so, you know, so, to create inspiration for yourself. You know, create your own inspiration on a daily basis. And some people, they get inspiration only when they go to church on Sunday. 
because they have good praise and worship, a good message. You don't need to wait for Sunday for you to ask to be inspired. You can create inspiration in your life every day. You can have an inspired life, positive life every day. You know, it is your it is your choice. You create your own environment. You create your own inspiration. And there are two ways to do it, like I just told you. Two ways to decide who you will become and how your life will look in the next 10 years. One, the first way is, the first means is by the books or lectures that you listen to or by the books that you read. So the book that you read decides your destiny or the things that you, you fill your life with will decide where you'll be tomorrow. But most importantly, uh, you know, the Bible says that uh, uh, you know, bad manners will corrupt or does it say evil communication will corrupt uh, good manners. Evil communications will co co corrupt good manners. So the people you surround yourself with, the, the people that you relate to and with on a regular basis, they go a long way to decide your future, your destiny. So if evil communication corrupts uh, uh, bad, good manners, that means that you could even be originally a good person. You could be an inspired person originally. You could have good, good, good qualities originally. But if you have the wrong people around you, those wrong people will bring you down. You will lose even the very best qualities that you had. Your character will be affected. Your character will be changed because you have the wrong people around you. Because you have the wrong people around you. If you want to be a happy person, make sure that you fill yourself with people who are happy. If you want to be a successful person, fill your life with people that are successful. And if you don't have them anywhere around you, do use the first strategy to do it. Use books, use messages, use, uh, you know, seeing speeches like this that, that I'm giving to you to decide what your destiny will be like. So don't be at the mercy of people around you. Don't be at the mercy of your family even. Don't be at the mercy of your, of your, of your, nest of kin because some, somebody, some people could say, well, you know, I cannot divorce my wife anymore. I cannot divorce my husband. And, you know, that's just what I have. Uh, my parents are not good for me, but I cannot do anything about it. Well, if you think that they are bringing negativity, become a sower. Don't just be, wait to, re, to reap and to receive only. The Bible says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So what does that mean? Uh, live your life in a way that you are the one that is always giving, that thing that you expect to receive from others, begin to give it. So even though you don't have those people around you that could, mm, you know, that could inspire you or that could uh, be a source of encouragement or wisdom to you, you be that source of encouragement to them. You be that source of wisdom to them. You be that source of understanding to them. You begin to give to people. So, uh, because the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So, become a sower. Be sowing. If you want to receive joy, begin to sow joy in the life of people. If you want to receive wisdom, begin to sow the wisdom you already have in the life of people. Some people say, okay, what about if they don't want to receive it? If they don't want to receive it, create your own atmosphere and be, keep on filling your life with the, the things that you need to, you know, that you need that will make you better. And then, you know, Find people that you'll be able to give these things to. If your family members don't want to receive, then let other people, you know, maybe anywhere, maybe in the internet, maybe in your, at your work, maybe in your church, you know, begin to give to them. Because the best way to receive is actually to give what you already have. When you are giving what you already have, then you increase what you have. You don't deplete what you have. You don't lose what you have. You actually, you know, increase what you have by giving what you already have to people. So, so, so create your own atmosphere, create your own environment, and let, let the, your environment be the environment that positively affects you. You know, uh, some of us, we think that we're at the mercy of what is happening in our country. Oh, this just happened there, this just happened there. Yes, if you don't build your own protective edge, you'll be at the mercy of the news. You'll be at the mercy of the politics of your country. You'll be at the mercy of what people are talking around about around you because you have not built your own edge. So build an edge around yourself. Build an edge around yourself. And that edge that you build should be, you know, by the, the walls, should not just be to keep people off, but it should be an edge where that you use to surround yourself so that, um, uh, 
so that, you know, that the walls are not walls of hatred or neg negative walls. They should be the wa walls that you, you desire to learn from. They should be the walls of, you know, of inspiration to yourself. Walls of, your, in your own world, of growth. Walls, walls of, uh, of ink, of, you know, adding value to yourself. The, the walls that you create, you build, the edge that you create around yourself and the wall that you build around yourself should be walls that give you knowledge, give you inspiration, give you aspiration, give you encouragement, and give you focus to become or what you wish to become. So don't let, don't be thinking that you are at the mercy of the country you are living in. Don't think that you are at the mercy of the people you surround yourself with. You know, you, not all of us will be in the best country in the world. Then seven billion people cannot be in the best country in the world. It's, you know, it just, it's, it doesn't just work that way. But we can all bring the best uh, obtainable practices all over the world into our own environment, into our own lives. So create your own life. Don't, don't wait till something naturally happens. Oh, somebody, sometimes people say, oh, I have a good mood today. Why do you have a good mood today? Oh, somebody gave me something. Oh, somebody told me, uh, gave me some compliments. Or somebody, something good just happened. You don't need to wait for something good to happen before you could be happy. Decide your own happiness by surrounding yourself with people, with things and people that positively impact and influence you. So you don't need to wait, you know, at, and be at the mercy of people who, who will do what to you. You know, let your life be filled with people, you know, that you choose. Choose. Be the owner of your own life. Be the one that choose people who surround you. Be the one that choose your friends. Be the ones that choose people that influence you. Other people don't have to influence you. You can choose. Yes, not at all time. But even if you are working at a place where you cannot choose or you are living with your, your relatives where you cannot choose, but after you leave that, their own atmosphere, go to your own atmosphere, go to your own environment that you have created for your own self so that you have chosen to be in. So despite the fact that, you know, other things could influence us, but you can also create such an environment that you will influence, I mean, that will influence you better in the way that you live than in the in 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 other ways so uh uh you know life shouldn't be don't 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 agree to live in sorrow don't agree to look to live in discouragement don't agree to live in uh in frustration don't agree to live in uh in lies and in you no know, frustrating environment and in your trouble even if you have problem real problem let's say with your wife or with your daughter or with your son or with your husband and those problems are nagging at you. They are coming against you. But you still can control your own mood despite that. You still can create your own environment. You still can act, you know, can create inspiration for yourself. Even when you have the most nagging problem, the most horrible problem. Let's say your son is in prison or your, your daughter is, you know, is doing something that is wrong or your husband is drinking. You can still create your own atmosphere even in that most negative atmosphere how do you do it follow the principle that it is not what is happening that decides your joy it is not what is happening that decides your reality it is what you fix your mind at it is what you focus on that decides your reality let's let me give you an example let's say uh mm, you are listening to me now but as you are listening to me there are other things also happening around the world, but you don't know about them. Maybe as you are listening to me now, God forbid, your son or your husband or your wife is doing something bad. But because you don't know about that, you cannot even think about it. What you don't know about, what you have not brought to your mind, you, you, can, you are not focusing on it, so it's not affecting your feelings. It is only what you are focusing on that affects your feelings. And then that goes ahead to affect your life. So what I'm saying is that but once you know about it, somebody comes to you with the news and say, oh, your son has done this, or your daughter has done this, or your husband has done something bad, then you shift your mind and your focus from the positive things you've been hearing from me now. You shift it to begin to think about that bad thing that you heard about. And once you are thinking about that bad thing, it now becomes your reality. It, bec it becomes your environment. So once you begin now to think that, oh, how could he do this to me? Oh, this guy is so bad. Oh, this... 
then that begins to bring you depression. It begins to bring you bad mood. It begins to affect you negatively instead of positively. So in the same way, you can even still know about the bad thing that has happened or that is happening to you right now. The bad things could still be happening, but you could just decide through your own decision that I will not make it my reality. This bad thing that is happening, I am going to shift my mind from it. I am going to, instead of focusing on this bad thing that is happening, I am going to now focus my mind on what I choose to think about. If the words of Pastor Sunday are those things that, that you choose to, to, to listen to, if these words are the words that encourage you, then do that and say, okay, I'm going to listen to Pastor Sunday until I begin to think only about what Pastor Sunday is saying. If anything, somebody was even writing me yesterday and said, they like, they like, they, two days ago, they said they like my laughter. They like the way, they like the way I laugh. And they said, they, my, even my laughter is an inspiration for, to them. Well, think about my laughter. Put a video, you know, I have people in my church here who have my laughter as their telephone sound or their telephone song. So they are ring, their telephone is ringing. When their telephone rings, it is Pastor Sunday laughing. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. So people use that as their telephone. So each time their telephone rings, they are hearing Pastor Sunday's voice. They are hearing some laughter that's giving them joy. So do something. Choose your what you allow to, to influence your life. Choose what you allow to influence your feeling. You can choose it. It is your choice. So instead of you thinking all the time about the thing that has been happening in your life, that has been making you to be depressed, that has been oppressing you, that has really been bad, you know, stop. Just say stop. It is not what is happening that is the problem. It is what you're focusing on that is the problem. And it is only your focus that decides your thought. And it is only your focus that decides your feeling. And it is your focus that decides your action later on. So choose to focus on the thing that will inspire you. Choose to focus on the thing that encourage you. Choose to focus on things that, you know, that, 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 that lifts you up, that, that, that blesses you, that opens your eyes, that expands your mind, that adds value to you. Choose to focus on those things rather than on the things that put you down, that makes you to want to cry, that discourage you. Just stop to think about it. Some people think, okay, if I stop to think about it, then it will be irresponsible. I feel myself irresponsible. Oh, will I just, you know, not think about anything? You know, by thinking about it, you know, and you are getting worried and it's affecting you badly, that doesn't change anything and it doesn't resolve the problem. It's better to be thinking about the ways to resolve problems rather than be worried about it. Things that are giving you troubles and making you to worry, they will not, they, they will only kill you. They are only making your, your health worse. But the things that will really make you to change situations, they will not make you worry. They will make you to think about ways to solve situation, the, the, the situation you are in. The words of wisdom, wisdom doesn't make you worry. Wisdom makes you better. It makes you to want to work on something. So, so it's, it's not a, a, an act of irresponsibility. If you don't find a, anything positive that will help you to resolve the problem to think about, then stop thinking about the negative one. Stop thinking about it altogether until you find something positive that you can think about, wisdom that you can you know, meditate on that will take you to solution. Think on only those things that will take you into the solution rather than thinking about the things that will bury you more into the problem. So, so uh, you know, especially the people that you have around you, do that uh, invent inventory that I spoke to you about, and let you know the, your 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 the people who are, who are around who are around you, the people who want to make you better, the people who push you forward, people who encourage you, people who you know who you encourage. It doesn't just have to be that there are people you who just you receive from who only encourage you. You can also find people. Uh, that, you know, you could be a blessing to people that are learning from you. That is also a, a good thing because once people are learning from you, uh, then you, you are also, you know, in, improving yourself. You are giving to people and people are receiving from you and, and they are being blessed through you. So, so, you know, don't be discouraged by, I mean, don't lock yourself in, 
into in, in, in the fact that there are no people who can, who could be a blessing to you around you. But uh, 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 find people who are ready to, to receive your own blessing. Find people who are ready to learn from you. And once you could learn, you know, you find people like that, begin to sow into them. So don't just be a receiver, be a giver. Like I said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And once you are giving like that, you will also be enriching your own life. Okay.